Hey guys, Trace here for D News Plus. As you know, recently, uh, if you follow me on Instagram anyway, I went to Norway to go to the Svalbard Seed Vault. Obviously, if you are familiar with that, you're excited right now. I was excited to go there. If you don't know what that is, it is one of the world's biggest science projects. More than 100 countries got together and signed something called the Plant Treaty, where they would give their seeds to the seed vault as a backup plan, just in case something went wrong and they lost those plants in their fields. So say you have a variety of corn and that corn gets wiped out, I don't know, somebody runs over it with their car or a disease strikes, you know, whatever it is, they can go to the seed vault, they can get those corn seeds, they can grow them again and then return the next generation back to the vault again. That way we can manage our crops for the next generation and the generation after that. It's really, really cool. but. I did this interview with Marie Haga, who is the executive director of the Crop Trust, who runs the Svalbard Seed Vault. I did this while I was in Svalbard, which is 800 miles from the North Pole. Super, super cool. This is a different D News Plus week. You're not gonna be able to see me in this video. You might not be able to hear my voice really well, uh, but the Seed Vault is something that I have been excited for for a long time, as you can probably tell. I think you guys are gonna really love this. Uh, Ms. Haga is awesome. So I wanna share this with you. So Tell us about how Crop Trust came to be. Well, it, it was just a very good idea. <laughs> and, um, the, and the the background was really that we have these plant gene banks around the world, um, 1,750 of them, in fact. Um, and they hold extremely important um, material. Uh, people tend to forget that um, this diversity of, of crops, germ plasm, uh, it's really one of our most important natural resources. Uh, one of the most important global common goods we have. And um, this tremendously important natural resource was just not looked after. These 1,750 gene banks were partly in very bad shape. Some were in excellent shape. You have some excellent gene banks, for example, in the US. Um, but, uh, but many were in very, very poor state and um, we were losing material in plant gene banks every day. And when we lose uh, diversity, when we lose germplasm, then what we really lose is options for the future and that's no good. So the idea was quite simply to establish an organization to look after one of the most important natural resources we have, crop diversity. That's great. So. Why uh, did Crop Trust tr choose to put a vault here on Svalbard? Well, the decision was partly made by the Crop Trust um, and partly by the Norwegian government because um, this idea had come up uh, to establish a, a vault which really is a backup of a global system for conservation of plant genetic resources. Um, and um, then you had to find somebody who could fund it. <laughs> and Norway did fund it. And um, the vault uh, was then decided to be placed here. Now, there's a little bit more background to it because um, the Nordic plant gene bank had already started to store material here in Svalbard, in an old mine, in fact. So, Originally, the idea was to use one of these old mines uh, and then have also the global seed vault in, one, in, in a mine. Uh, but then when this became a reality, when there actually was money on the table and people could really look into how one could do this, um, it became pretty clear that it wasn't the greatest idea to, to have this extremely important natural resource in an old mine um, for several reasons. Uh, first of all, because it could pose a security threat to the seeds. Because, you know, although um, a mine is not being used anymore and most of the coal probably then is taken out, there could still be um, coal in there. And um, of course, if you if coal catch fire, catches fire, then it you know, runs through the mountains or whatever it is. Uh, so there was a, it could be a potential security threat in terms of, of fire. 
And all, there was also a concern of contamination from coal to the seeds. That was probably exaggerated. Um, but it was decided that there could um, be some important reasons for not using an old mine. Uh, so then one decided just, okay, uh, Norway has made tunnels in mountains for years, <laughs> so why not just, you know, make another one? Make another one, yeah, and use the technology that is well known. So then one started uh, digging out uh, this huge hole in the mountain, and there is now a seed vault. That is cool. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily because some of the things that I've read were, you know, political situation in terms of Svalbard's kind of uniqueness on the international policy stage, and it wasn't so much that it's... It, is it in part because it's just very cold here? I mean, is that a benefit? Absolutely. Uh, seeds like to be, to be stored long term at minus 18 degrees. And it's of course a great advantage then when the permafrost gives minus 6 at the outset. So, you know, instead of cooling down from plus 40 uh, to minus 18, you cool down from minus 6 to, to, uh, to minus 18. So that is a great advantage. So, yeah, there is a security aspect um, related to having the seeds stored in the permafrost, because even though we were maybe not able to use electricity to cool it down to minus 18, you would still have minus 6, which is good. So there's a security aspect to that. It's of course also cheaper um, <laughs> to cool down from minus six than from, for example, plus 40. Um, but there, there were many reasons for establishing the seed vault here uh, in Svalbard. The permafrost, establishing the vault in the permafrost is a good idea at the outset. Um, now, Svalbard is also a good place to have a vault like this because it's damn hard to get here, as you know. Yeah. Uh, it takes a long time to fly to, from California and here. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time also to fly from mainland Norway up here. It's, it's, uh, it's an inconvenient place to come to, so you wouldn't expect too many unwelcome visitors to come here. Um, it's a local community that is very transparent. Everybody knows what goes on. So there's also some security just stemming from the fact that this is a remote place. Um, but in addition comes that Norway was a country that was willing to fund uh, the establishment of the vault. So many good things um, came together. You will also see that the vault is fairly high up in the mountain. So even though sea level were to rise um, due to climate change, there's no danger that there would be water in the, um, in the vault. How exactly was it built? I mean, it it appears to just kind of jut out of the mountain. Did they use like, the same kind of technology you sort of touched on earlier about building mines and things? Like how did they, how did they build this? More, more like um, just digging out a tunnel. And that is, uh, there are lots and lots of tunnels in Norway, so they know how to do that. Uh, so no, it, it's extremely simple technology. You know, this is quite simply a, a hole in the mountain. <laughs> and so you walk through a tunnel, 130 meters, and then you come into the permafrost of the mountain. And um, then you will see it's just dug out a huge hole, uh, which I consider the cathedral. I always get this feeling of going into a cathedral when I get there. It's just so amazingly quiet. And uh, you get this divine feeling. Um, you see these three doors, uh, which are doors into the cold storage. Uh, now only one of them is in use, one of the vaults is in use now. Uh, we have 860,000 accessions of seeds in there, uh, but still only one of the rooms are being used. And you know, in there you have actually 13,000 years history of agriculture. It's quite amazing and uh, you get this strange feeling of, of, you know, experience something unique when you're in there. And I always get that same feeling. So I wish everybody could experience that. Um, you know, so it's, it's a history of agriculture in there and it's potentially also the future of agriculture in there. So to me, a very, very special place.
When it comes to the cold storage, is there a benefit to sort of refrigeration versus cryogenic freezing, um, like a like liquid nitrogen freezing, or is it just keep them cold but not frozen? Well, most seeds um, can be stored long term at minus 18 degrees, or they can keep for a long time at uh, at a temperature that isn't that uh, cold either. Um, but that's sort of the perfect temperature. Uh, at least that's what scientists say. That's the knowledge we have now. Yeah. And, and um, many plants have seeds, and then it's a very easy way to store them um, in a just in a freezer, to put it that way. But now there are, of course, plants that don't have seeds. Um, you know, potatoes is, um, well, there is actually something called potato, potato seeds. seeds. Yeah, that's really uh, and we do have potato seeds in, in the world, but it, it's, um, the potato seeds don't work as regular seeds. It's more complicated to get these potatoes back. Um, you can take coconut. Coconut, uh, well, coconuts, of course, have seeds. The, the seed is the coconut. So it's, the seed is as big as your head. <laughs> um, you can't freeze it. Uh, and that's why uh, cryopreservation is uh, extremely convenient. You take out the embryo of the coconut and put it in liquid nitrogen. And uh, we have procedures now that work very well. Uh, but it's still a very expensive way uh, to conserve. And um, it's not necessary to use those kinds of technologies for plants that have, have seeds. She's great. I love that the seed vault is a thing. Is this not super cool? Make sure you subscribe so you get all these episodes. We're going to come back later with some more from Marie Haga of the Crop Trust.